Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke Shocks, because the headlines keep on coming, so I keep on coming to fight them off. Of course, Prince Harry's popularity is down to 26%, according to a YouGov poll, proving that marrying a feminist bitch is worse for your public reputation than going to a Halloween party dressed like a Nazi. The uh, Brit Awards are under fire now for only men being nominated in their second annual gender-neutral award category, although you can understand their confusion since Henry, Harry Styles is one of the nominees and he might as well be a tranny. VFX artist Mark Patch is dis- has recently disclosed refusing to work with Marvel due to their low pay and unseasonably long hours and short deadline demands which reveals another product uh, in America being actually manufactured by Chinese prison labor. Mark Ruffalo tweeted at Senator Joe Manchin about how gas stoves are inferior and need to be banned in favor of induction stoves, which range from somewhere between $5,000 to even $3,500. Well, I'll go with whichever stove is better for roasting the corpse of Joseph Rosenbaum just to see Mark Ruffalo cry. The all-female spinoff of The Expendables has been cancelled, after years of being in development, just to see the look on Jennifer Lawrence's brain-dead face. The BrodyCon founder, who harassed Limited Run Games into firing their community manager, shut down his Twitter account, apparently to have a weekend alone with Vosh and Movie Bob for them all to enjoy cuties in private. A man is selling copies of Harry Potter books with J.K. Rowling's name removed from the cover for $171 American. Mindy Kaling from three months ago bought for the first copy. And, of course, Ezra Miller pled guilty to a charge of unlawful trespassing after pleading not guilty to burglary, yet will only be put on probation with no sentence actually to serve any time being put out there, and continues to may or may not be involved in the upcoming reboot of the DC Cinematic Universe. Due to this, the U.S. military is looking into applying gender pronouns for deflector shield technology. Now, of course, we expected this, honestly, for this twisted legal system, and that goes quadruple, maybe even quintuple for the twisted legal system of California, that a man with these kind of uh, twisted little cases, this many amount of crimes to his name, this amount of public disclosure on just what kind of things he's done, and this is a man who has a crime rap all across the damn country. If you go from what happened in Hawaii, where he was stalking those people, to this burglary where he was going into an empty house, to the wherever it was where he choked a woman with a camera filling him the whole time, to this farm in the middle of nowhere where he had uh, women with babies there kidnapped with like all kinds of firearms, where the babies were apparently using live ammunition as pacifiers. Yes, they were sucking on the live rounds he put in the baby's mouths, and yet still there is no yay or nay on whether or not he is going to be uh, removed from the DC universe. But we are very clear in knowing that we aren't going to see any more of Henry Cavill because I'm guessing his love of the Witcher franchise and refusal to call fanboys or fans of franchises toxic is just too much for them to deal. It's just too problematic. Or, of course, don't forget, there's also the good old-fashioned guilt by association. The people in the film in the film industry and the entertainment industry in general, they love to shit on the Church of Scientology and love to rag on anybody, any actor, whoever, who was publicly involved in the church. And yet, for everything that was espoused that the church does so horrifically in the documentary Going Clear, one of them seems to be something that Hollywood really loves to do, and maybe it's a case of, in the show business, they just don't like competition, so they don't like the Church of Scientology. Having people force in their church being forced to disassociate themselves with anybody who does not agree with their dogma whether they're in the church or not because they're labeled as subversive persons like the details of the documentary talks about how the man in charge of the church of scientology david miscavige absolutely despised tom cruise's marriage to nicole kidman due to her father being a psychiatrist and psychiatry psychology those kinds of treatments are something that is utterly 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 evil according to the church of scientology they are about as open-minded to that as people in antifa are open-minded to any journalist that factually reports on them as being a reincarnation of mussolini's black shirts 
Or, of course, there is other little details about them, such as the former member of the church who was a longtime TV producer turned Oscar-winning writer-director Paul Haggis, where the church was trying to force him to disassociate any contact with one of his daughters because one of his daughters turned out to be a lesbian. And oh, the irony that the two, they have that way, that attitude on gays, when the two most famous members of their church acting-wise, well, one's been caught with photographic evidence and the other one has had plenty of rumors about what it is he does that motivates him to do all his own running in his movies e.g. the Tom Cruise cutaway jack with Family Guy and he's running from the guy with the strong arms and Miller on the other hand of course take a good look at this a man with this kind of criminal record but he certainly does live up to their modern delusions about gender or about what masculinity is or what should be reassessed where some complete no nothing do nothing little pop puppet like Harry Styles gets to be plucked out from the members of One Direction who is allowed to be forced down Hollywood's, forced down our throats by Hollywood because he wears dresses at events and at magazine covers. Yeah, he's such a great and important and multi-talented person that he's getting what he's getting in Hollywood by openly being caught fucking the director. Yeah, truly he is speaking up against the traditions of Hollywood by just going out there putting on a dress, but still being no different from any Scarlett Johansson or Margot Robbie who gets what they do, who gets where they are, who gets what they want in show business by sleeping around. But we're going to make sure Henry Cavill's not going to be involved in the future of DC because, well, we've got this real plan out there. And if you really think that James Gunn, the man who I would like to remind you, was a guy who was rescued from cancel culture due to uh, the disturbing tweets, the creepy ass tweets he was making for years on end with no consequences. And guess what? He gets to be brought back into the world of the DC universe. And what has he been doing even with productions that have nothing to do with him? Him trying to dive into the whole Velma crap. And this was, I know, and I don't mean the new Velma cartoon, I mean that cartoon Vel, uh, Scooby-Doo movie, where of course, uh, you know, it's uh, considered groundbreaking because the production itself finally decided to satisfy the weird groomers, I, I mean, uh, you know, crusaders and righteous activists for, so, for turning out Velma so that a bunch of creepy adults projecting adult sexuality onto cartoon characters for children can be considered some kind of great righteous crusade, when Gunn, of course, utterly bullshit bullshitted these people by tweeting about how he wanted Velma to be a lesbian in his drafts for the Scooby-Doo script. And then, and then the evil, disgusting Warner Brothers executives were so prejudiced, they forced him to write it out. Then they gave her a love interest in the sequel. Bite me, okay? You Apparently you don't mind these Warner Brothers people be, uh, being such bigots or whatever when they're hiring you to be the new man in charge of trying to make the DC universe of movies work again. But there I go with all that fucking rhetorical consistency. Yeah, it's the you're following Colin Kaepernick logic where they're such horrendous bigots. Unless, of course, there's any opportunity that they'll hire me back, then I'll glad to be going diving into this uh, business I called uh, slavery or this business that was run by these executives who were so homophobic. I believe you about as much as I believe Jesse Smollett or as I would believe Amber Heard or as I would believe uh, uh, Leanne Tweeden in her accusations of Mr. Al Franken. And the fact that the same mongoloids at CNN would go out their way to try to celebrate themselves for doing their part in getting Al Franken to cancel himself from the Senate, but they'll gladly rehire Jeffrey Tubin, the guy who spanked it on a live damn Zoom call, which is their example. Consider Jeffrey Tubin to be CNN's very own James Gunn of a creepy ideologue and pervert, but because he's got the right connections and the right opinions and made the right people happy, he'll go and do whatever he wants for the rest of his life. But at least with James Gunn, he actually was successful with something with directing Guardians of the Galaxy and his sequel. Where has Ezra Miller ever been successful at one point or another? Where has he ever really led any kind of production that was a massive damn success? success? Nothing. You know why? Because that's not really what matters to them. What matters is ideology. It's a matter of take a good long work at how many people inside or outside of the industry, whether they be the mainstream shill critics or the shill media website critics like your Mary Sue or whatever, the Axis media, they hate uh, a successful film like Spider-Man No Way Home for not having ideology and try to punish it retroactively and fail. You know, it's, uh, but if the work, no matter how rich in human insight, character portrayal or imagination seems to imply wrong political conclusions, it will be indicted, severely mauled or beheaded 
as the case may be. Yeah, of course. Or other examples of how they absolutely positively in video games or in movie or comic books, anything, want to hate on anything that doesn't give them their woke boner, the kind of fuel they need, like their intellectual Viagra. The work of art was something that does satisfy their piece of crap, that quote unquote work of art that does justify their sociopathy or their narcissism in their personal politics. Like Velma, of course, this work of art was not viewed on either occasion as to its real quality, its deep revelation of life's or character or the social scene, but primarily as to whether or not it was the proper leaflet for the moment, which is exactly what mainstream critics do to crap like Velma that follows current thing or to any Star Wars production that is following current thing. And what were those quotes? Those quotes were from What Shall We Ask of Writers, a little essay that was published in a pro commie magazine written by Albert Maltz, one of the blacklisted Hollywood 10 screenwriters who admitted to putting Lenin worship and into his screenplays. And that was an article. Those are passages from articles he wrote to that was excoriating the extreme left leftism worship of socialist dogma being incinerated by communist agitators into Hollywood productions. And if you think that what's going on where Ezra Miller is still may or may not be allowed into the world of the DC universe, same goes for Amber Heard, but an emphatic no more to Henry Cavill's going out there and you don't think it has anything to do with ideology, well, there's a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. And that's not my opinion. I know I'm right. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Remember to subscribe if you're new. Check that you're still subscribed if you're a returning viewer. And to all viewers new or returning, the best way to support my work since my channel is still not monetized is to shop on my Square store. You'll find pen and ink art for 25 bucks, color art for 30, sketchbooks for 25, or you can commission a color piece for 60, a pen and ink piece for 50, or a trading card for 20. And they're the last items in my color drawing categories, illustrations categories, or in my posters slash trading cards category. And uh, you will also see the posters and trading cards my posters are 200 a piece and my trading cards are 10 and whatever you buy in the store only comes with a flat five dollar shipping and handling fee for one or any number of items if you live outside of the u.s remember you can only pay for items via a donation since my store can't receive orders from foreign addresses simply add up the prices of what you want in u.s dollars include another 25 u.s for the international shipping fee and make that payment as a donation, your items will ship immediately. And anybody from around the world can donate as well to the store. Donations are the first thing you see in the store. You can also donate to me via a um, Streamlabs link, which is the second in the description below. So until then, I thank you all for watching. And remember, felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.